Unfortunately, models are starting to catch on with the expected pattern. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you, and that's going to line up to a likely very active and potentially impactful August. We're going to break that down, not liking where the Bermuda High is setting up, at least for the first half of the month. Again, mentioning this before, the models are starting to come in line with the pattern. There has been a lot of blank out there in terms of the ensemble support with the pattern that's been upcoming. But now, over the last several runs over the past few days, they are coming in line as you would expect for a large-scale pattern that is coming through. By the end of this video, you may have heard of the Madden-Julian oscillation. You're going to know what that is and how it relates to the active stretch coming on the pipeline. So stick around towards the end of the video for that so that you can know exactly how this is going to shake out. And then we'll take a look at the dust. It's still out there in the short term, but likely going to go away quick. Before we get into all that, and we venture through the next couple of minutes together. Hit that subscribe button if you want to stay updated on the tropics. Have the weather conversation. Enjoying this awesome and growing weather community. Post in the comments where you're tuning in from. And we're going to get to it. All right. So the Climate Prediction Center just updated their really two-week stretch here of potential tropical cyclone formation. Again, a tropical cyclone is a cyclone anywhere in the world. And the tropics is a tropical cyclone. We know them in the Atlantic Basin as depressions, storms, and hurricanes. So just wanted to get that out there. But here we go. They highlighted this area. And this one has been highlighted for really a couple of weeks. So really, this is a very early heads up. And there's the timestamp up top from July 31st to August 6th could have a system in this general area, extreme southwest Atlantic or the northeast Caribbean. Again, that is a greater than 20% chance. So still low at this time, but again, something to be mindful of. Now as we go deeper, so this is the experimental part, that second week from the Climate Prediction Center. It's another system, another long track system here working across the main development region of the Atlantic. And then again, the Caribbean and extreme southwest Atlantic likely needs to be on guard again from August 7th through August 13th. So there's the deal with that. We're going to get into why that is. I always show the work on this channel. Again, I don't just want to say, hey, look, we need to be heads up on here, or hey, here's the model forecast. I really want you guys to know and understand what the mechanism is for the uptick in tropical activity. So first and foremost, I want to show you the next thing here, where we have the activity brewing at this time. And right now it's in the Eastern Pacific. We have two tropical waves out there likely to develop. On the Atlantic side, we have many more tropical waves coming out. Now that we still have dust out there, and they're likely going to get gobbled up, at least those first two. But it's these bigger waves that are coming off the African plateau right now toward the Cabo Verde Islands that are starting to be modeled, of course, as we go forward. The mechanism responsible for this uptick in tropical activity is something known as the Madden-Julian Oscillation. And we're going to take a little bit of break from the model forecast, so we're going to get back to that in just one second. I showed you the highlighted area, so stick around for that. I'm going to show you the models, but I do want you to kind of know what the Madden-Julian Oscillation is. So the MJO for short, it's really this convective cluster or this disturbance of clouds and showers that go around the globe every about 30 to 60 days. And what happens here is this really takes place towards the Indian Ocean. We have a cluster of thunderstorms and clouds there promoting rising motion in that part of the world. To complete the circulation on the eastern side of it, we have sinking air, which helps to dry out the atmosphere. So it creates that circulation here. Now, as a whole, this complex or this kind of uh, system here as a whole progresses to the east around the globe and this whole dipole this upward motion and then downward motion goes with it so in certain parts of the world it impacts the weather differently so here is the kind of phase chart that i want to show you this is from the national weather service uh, from noaa and it goes from phase one through phase eight starting here with phase two and just like what i showed you you see it's kind of hard to see in this chart to get it all on the screen for you but where you see the green that's where you would expect more thunderstorms where you see the brown that's where you would expect uh drier air sunny weather as the air would be sinking and drying out note as the phases go beyond we're looking at the blue and uh, red or the blue and green color here notice how it goes further to the east and eventually you start seeing anomalies pop up on the atlantic side if you see my mouse down here uh kind of going crazy that's the phases that we would typically look when we are in phase 
eight and one, we would expect potential development in the Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean. And then when we jump into phase one and two, that's when we would expect those long track storms. So for that, I want to go to my extra source and my other computer source. And I want to show you here, this is the actual forecast. So that was just the nutshell of the phases. This is the actual forecast now of the Madden-Julian oscillation. And I promise there's a method to my madness for this because I'm going to show you some of the ensembles that are now biting. I told you before, I think it's really important to dissect the overall pattern of this so that the modeling makes sense. And then I'm going to issue a word of caution on looking at the run-to-run -run models here coming up in just one second. So stick around for that. All right. By the way, if you're still with me, hit that like button. If you like this stuff, hit subscribe. Hang out with us as we move forward through hurricane season. It's likely going to get busy. All right, so here we go. This first sliver here up at the top of the screen. So this is the world kind of split in half. Africa's on the right. There's the Indian Ocean in Asia. Uh, and there's Australia at the tip top right there where my mouse is. Here are the Americas. And then here's Western Australia. Or Africa, I should say. My gosh. Here we go. This is where you see the brown air would be sinking in the Atlantic Basin. It has been very, very quiet, base in. It's been very quiet, as we all know, in the Atlantic. We've been talking about this for quite some time, that it's because of the MJO and dust that is helping to keep things extremely quiet in the Atlantic. Okay, so that is through June, uh, July 23rd. So now the date moves to July 28th. We are still brown. Ah, but look, remember I showed you before the tropical blobs, the yellows out there in the eastern Pacific. Notice the green starting to show up. So that would match extra thunderstorm activity out there. Now, this is through August 2nd. We have the green starting to work its way into Central America and the Western Gulf, okay? As we move into August 7th, the brown really starting to go away over Africa, where my mouse is, and then really starts to highlight the Caribbean and Southwest Atlantic. As we get towards August 12th, this is when things really could start to take off. We have a very big pulse of the MJO sliding through. The anomalies get darker here. This is August 12th, this sliver down here. This is August 17th, August 22nd, August 27th, and then September 1st. We start to maybe get some sinking air in the western side, but still, we have, if we go onto the eastern Africa side, that is a very, very active pattern for the Atlantic to continue to produce thunderstorms over Africa, which become tropical waves. So what I'm saying is we could have a system out there in the first week of August to track, but then it could go gangbusters for the next four to six weeks through the middle of September. So again, it's the PSA saying, oh, everybody from everybody that said, oh, the season's over. The forecasts were hype. We have uh, the MJO meeting up with climatology with near record water temperature this is what everybody was warned about by almost every forecast entity including the national weather service national hurricane center colorado state you name it um this is what was feared and right now it looks like it's coming into fruition all right so i'll get off the soapbox here because i'm sure that you are more interested in the actual modeling so these are the ensembles the ensembles are like a band, um, like a band ensemble. Each member has a different initial condition kind of put into it so that we get a wide range of outcomes rather than a point forecast like the operational model. So whenever everyone goes crazy and shows this Cat 5 storm heading into somewhere, that's likely going to bounce around and change for a couple of weeks. It gets exhausting watching that stuff. You want to look at ensembles in this stage of the game. And even then, this is... Uh, where I have this taken out to, this is through August 2nd. So, I mean, we're talking 9, 10 days away, okay? So just keep that in mind and take everything you see on social media with a grain of salt because there's a lot of stuff out there that are showing a very strong hurricane somewhere in the Caribbean or Eastern Gulf or Southwest Atlantic, Southeast U.S. Um, in that August 1st to August 3rd time frame. Is it possible? No doubt. Okay, no doubt that's possible, but I'm talking about the location. We don't know where that's going to be yet because we have 9 to 10, 12 days to shake out and dissect the steering current and if it can survive some of the dust as its tropical wave. Anyway, you see 
growing model, growing ensemble consensus here that we have something going on, either maybe in the Northeast Caribbean, uh, certainly favoring the Turks and Caicos, Bahamas, and then the southeast corner of the U.S., and then maybe even the eastern Gulf. Now, at this point, we'd be talking about the Madden-Julian oscillation in that phase 8-1. to one. So really, anybody over here and then southeast corner, we want to be on guard. The issue here is that we have a very strong Bermuda high. If you note here what these colors represent in the middle of your screen— our pressure. The pinker the color, the higher the pressure. So here is high pressure anchored out here. This is the Bermuda Azores high, and it extends back towards the Carolinas. And then we even have a little bit of that appendage over the mid-Atlantic and deep south. If this stays here, and we don't have a dip in the jet stream crossing at this point, again, this is where it all matters. If we have something here, and then we have a nice cool down coming into the northeast, that storm will feel the weakness, and then the Carolinas are going to be at, in play. Or maybe even it'll split the difference between Bermuda and the Carolinas. We don't know at this point because it's way too early. It's 10 days out, and the weather features aren't even really on the, coming into the United States just yet to steer this thing. So that's the point I want to make. Take the run-to-run -run models with a grain of salt, but... We can pay attention to the ensembles that are at least showing a growing possibility of a tropical system rolling on through the tropical Atlantic as we get to the last couple of days of July and the first couple of days of August. In the short term, especially for my friends in the Caribbean, we do still have some dust. It was th thick in parts of the Caribbean over the past couple of days. And again, this is the current dust outlook here and you see that big brown plume there rolling off of africa that is going to work its way into the caribbean over the next couple of days i'll show you the model forecast here and again here's later in on tuesday and that spirals right on through trinidad and tobago the antilles the leeward islands the windward islands right on into puerto rico into the dominican republic into haiti the cayman islands jamaica cuba this one kind of spirals back into mexico again at least the yucatan into Central America, going to the south part of Florida, and then eventually into Mexico. But then there's two more plumes coming up. So that's why, again, it's not a slam dunk that we do get that system that we're watching to develop because there's still some hostility out there, although the wind shear looks to back off significantly, the water temperatures are warm, and if we can get something going, it might be able to fend off the dust, especially if it's in between. We saw that again with barrel, how it came off so low, it kind of missed the dust and missed choking it up, unlike Invest 96L that sucked it all in and that died quick. All right, another way to stay up on the tropics, tropics before we go click orlando.com slash newsletters scan that qr code that'll take you to click orlando.com slash newsletters there you can sign up for our free tropics watch newsletter i visit your inbox every monday and as necessary so do that it is free also if you have any questions hit me up in the comment section or hit me up on whatever you follow on the x facebook jonathan kegas new six you found the channel just weather certified kegas on the gram and then jkegas at wkmg.com that's my email address any questions i'd be more than happy to answer them again we talk about things all science and meteorology on this channel none of the hype none of the fear tactics and none of that click baity stuff again i like to show my work and show you why we're going to be active or not active i feel like that transparency is extremely extremely important Thank you guys so much for sitting through that. I hope that you enjoyed it all. And again, we're going to be watching this situation closely. We'll keep you updated every step of the way. Hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you join the team. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.